Good morning, everybody, and it's Eddie J on Crypto. Hope you're having a great day. So there's a lot to unpack. There's always a lot to unpack, so I'm always going to say that. But we got the 25 basis points that we expected yesterday, right? I mean, we did expect that, didn't we? But what we were really listening to were the comments during the QA, right? And Powell gave a lot of dovish comments. Not even, I wouldn't even say dovish. He gave a lot of comments on what their thought process is going forward and more about the parameters, right, of how they're going to make decisions. And he didn't rule, actually rule anything out, right? He, but, he, but he was leaning more toward the softer touches. And that's why the markets reacted the way they did. This is why on the crypto side, you saw things pop up a little bit. And we'll get into a couple of those. Let's hit some news. Coinbase was doing, you know, NFT creator airdrops. That wasn't working out too well. I don't think they lost any money. I think they just lost time. It just wasn't working out. And they're basically saying, uh, we're probably going to cut that off and move toward, you know, tools and features. Kind of makes sense. You never know. And I, I don't say this to put down Coinbase. I say this to actually teach a lesson to my kids. You never know if something's going to work until you try it. Seriously. You never know if you're going to hit that home run unless you swing. And that's the truth. So they tried it. Didn't work out the way they thought it would. So they're moving on to the next. There are a lot of people, you know, tossing foot around and, you know, talking some nonsense. And I'm sitting there and I'm kind of going, what's your problem? I don't get it. I don't understand your problem. You know, it, it's, it shouldn't be that big of a deal to take care of that. It's, it's simple as that. Try. Try something new. Okay. For a lot of people, crypto is new. Anyway, you have this company, Cherokee Acquisition. And what they're saying is they have something that kind of operates like put options. I'm not going to go into what put options are. You can go read a book. It's really easy. You can even watch a video on YouTube. It's really simple stuff. Basically, you know, if stocks go up, you, you buy calls, you buy puts if you think the stock is going to go down. And you can make that's how you can make money on either direction in the stock market. But what they're saying is, listen, if you've got money in you know, on Kraken, Coinbase, and Binance US, right? Notice how they're US based. We can sell you what we're calling, what they're calling put options, and, or they can sell you what they're calling put options, and you can protect up to 100% of the money that you have. Should those, one of those companies go bankrupt and lock up your assets? So look at all the failed, you know, all the failed exchanges that are out there. Had you had something like that, you might have been able to, you know, protect your protect your money. So we'll see. We'll see how that works. I'm not 100 percent sure. I'd have to do a little bit more research. I don't I also don't think I fit their criteria. I don't have that kind of money. I think they're basically looking at um, institutional investors and companies, you know, people that have this that kind of money going on. Um, but I but I have to say. Pretty cool idea. Have to check it out. I, I would take a deeper dive into that. Another really cool, you know, bit of news. Cool. I don't know. But Meta, right? The Meta stock popped up because they made more money than what people thought. They lost $13.72 billion on the Metaverse last year. Thirteen point seven two billion okay and they lost it and i'm just like wow how did their stock move up ai they were like we've had ai for a while and we're going to be using it for our platform to make it better but we've had it. it's been sitting in the corner we've had it for a long time so they moved away from metaverse speak and over to ai speak Wait until those two texts collide. Just saying, there's a lot going on there. From a technologist perspective, there's a lot going on in that space. But I wanted to point that out because my point is, is that Meta will never control the metaverse. They will never define the metaverse. That's not how it works, buddy. It's just not how it works. 
You can contribute. You cannot control. Just putting it out there for you. Now, I know you people know that I'm huge on Polygon. They don't pay me. Nothing like that. It's just that I love what they're doing. I love the business model. I love all the use cases. I love all the projects that are on there. I love the fact that they're printing out a blueprint on how to be successful, even as a side chain or layer two. And Shiba Inu is following that. If you look at just where Polygon was just last night, from last night to now, it's up 13%. 13%. If you were DCAing just from a few weeks ago, you could have bought in at like 77 cents and be looking at a dollar 22, I think it's a dollar 23 at this moment, right now. Stop and think about that. Some coins will rise just because the industry is rising. Other coins will rise because they're the leaders of the industry. That's how I do my research. Not just who's strong, not just what's up and coming, not just what's sexy, but what is actually going on. Are they driving their own news or are they beholden to another group, another company, another person to drive their news? Look at Doge, look at Elon, look at Shiba Inu controlling their narrative and coming up with new stuff. Bad news, Bitrex and... Who is it? Uh, chain analysis. This is an education on what companies are saying when they have layoffs. Chain analysis is laying off about 4% of their staff. 4%. That's an adjustment. That's an operational efficiency adjustment. Hey, we don't think the market's going to do fairly well. We're going to start trimming back right now. That's what we're going to do. Smart move. Only 4%. They will be in business with the kind of stuff that they do. They do analytics and analysis of blockchain, of the crypto space. Very important. Very, very important. Now, looking at Bittrex, their crypto exchange, they're shedding over 20% of their staff. I look at them and I kind of go, whoa, 20% of your staff? So when I sit there and I look at that, I kind of go, uh, are you guys going to be around? Now, I'm not trying to spread FUD, but I really want to know. I mean, 20%, that's that's a pretty, you know, rule of thumb kind of thing that a lot of people in business follow. If a company lays off less than 10%, they're probably just having adjustments. I mean, Goldman Sachs lays off like, what, 8% a year? It's called culling the herd. Producers, doers get to stay. Those other ones, not so much. So I'm looking at Bittrex and I'm going, you're shedding 21%. 20, over 21% of your staff. I question their solvency. They're not a huge exchange to begin with, but I question their solvency. I really do. And no, I don't use them. So when I look at Cherry Creek acquisition and everything that's going on at, at Bittrex, now, do I think Kraken, Coinbase, and Binance are going to go out of business? No, I don't. I don't. Could they run into trouble? Possible, right? There could be things that can trigger you or trigger a company to not do so well. And those are things that can trigger. Then you have Charlie Munger. Dude, he hates crypto. You hate crypto? Shut up. Go focus on your stocks, bro. Go, go handle that. That's the, really, he's a really, really, really smart guy. He's loaded, right? But I don't think he knows a lick about crypto. And if you pay attention to Ber Berkshire Hathaway, they invested, I did a video, you know, months ago about how they invested in a company that's focused on the crypto industry. So you're talking about how crypto is bad, but meanwhile, one of your companies is doing this. You know, I got to question that. Because those moves don't happen without, you know, Charlie Munger knowing about it. Seriously. So when I look at things like that, again, I look at it, I put him in the same boat as a Jamie Dimon. If you've got a company, if one of your holdings 
is investing in crypto, but you're out here yapping about how crypto is, you know, nothing more than, you know, a gambling contract. Uh, dude, you're, you're the same. You are the same. Right. Some, some other bit of news. I forgot the young lady's name. She is a, uh, a business reporter at Fox. And she was saying that, um, what is it? Uh, the SEC has not been reauthorized. Like what? Yeah, the SEC has not been reauthorized since 2015. It's 2023 now. So I don't know. I, I got to see how that works. But more importantly, I believe that uh, Gary Gensler is going to be called onto the carpet with the incoming or new um, House Financial Services Committee. I really do. He's got failures that he's got to explain. How did you fail with FTX? How, how, how did that happen? SBF practically lived on Capitol. Actually, he did live on Capitol Hill. He had an apartment, but he lived here. And had that major of a failure while meeting with your people. How'd that happen? A lot of people want to know. I want to know. I want to get the popcorn and sit down and watch that show. Anyway, let's get to the numbers. Um, and the reason why I want to go over the numbers is because there's a lot of stuff that's going on, right? Um, let's just do a quick refresh. That ought to do it. Let's make sure everything is. There you go. So looking at the losers, there are none. <laughs> <laughs> let's see, let me let me show you the screen I'm, tra I'm talking about it but i'm not showing you that's evil um all right so looking at the losers like i said there are none three percent down to zero there are none um looking at the winners um when i look here loop ring up 25 percent. don't ask me why i don't know why right it's loop ring versus immutable x that's all over GameStop and currently I think GameStop's uh, marketplace is based on Loop Ring, but they're supposed to build a new one on Immutable X. There's that whole controversy going on. It quietly went away, but it's still there. But they're up 25 percent. Optimism. Optimism is up 24 percent. OK, so you're looking at something where you can get in relatively cheap on either one of those. Um, render. They sell basically. Uh, CPU speed, they're up 20, 21% or GPU speed. Um, like if you wanted to render uh, render animations and things like that. Uh, way back in the day when I was doing computer animation, it was a big deal to have a strong CPU. It was a big deal if you could have a farm that could actually crunch all that stuff out. So, you know, that's actually a cool thing, but I don't know about their model, but their model must be working because they're up 21%. And they're, you know, working on something where I actually understand the industry. So I don't, I don't know that I hate on them. Um, probably not. Uh, who else is up? Immutable X up another 16%. Harmony up 16%. Uh, Phantom, another project that I like, 15%. Because Red Cardinal asked if, you know, what other coins do I like? And so I'm naming them, you know, as I go through things. Um, Avalanche, another one I like, 14% up. Um, so you have a lot of upward movement that should tell you, hey, you know, things are moving in the right di direction. What you're going to see right now is probably a lot of FOMO, a lot of fear of missing out, right? I don't know how long that's going to last. So eventually, there'll be a pullback. People want to take some profit and they'll move on from there. But pay attention. These are times where you can actually make some money. Now, looking at the fear and greed index, we're at 60 now. We're deep in, we're deep in greed. People are feeling good about what, what's going on. They're feeling really good. Um, because I would need to hurry it up. We're already at 14 minutes. Pretty long. Um, let's see what else. Total value locked, $64 billion. Now, if you want to pay attention to what's up and coming, start to pay attention who's involved in that. So you have Lido or Lido. You have Ave, MakerDAO, Curve, Uniswap is another name. Pancake Swap is another name. But I want you to pay attention to something. Pancake Swap has a nice name. Like they've been around for a while. Uniswap's been around for a while, right? But look what's above them. Curve, rank number four. These are things that you need to pay attention to, right? Because these are opportunities where there are coins that are doing well that you could actually get in on and actually do something. That's why I'm showing you total value locked. Now, if you're looking at Bitcoin, 
Remember, I have a $23,417 previous low on Bitcoin and we just then we've been popping up. We've been popping our heads above it for Bitcoin. And now look at that. Now we've popped our heads up again and it looks like we might be trying to go sideways above that old number. Now, if we can rem if we can maintain that level for a little bit, I think that we can we can pop that 25 to 10, which was a previous high. All right. And I do have more numbers just to sh just to show you. I do have more going on, like at, like at 28, another one at 31. So I do my research. Like I keep telling you, do your own research, but I do pay attention to things. The next one is look at Ethereum, look at Bitcoin. BNB is up tremendously. Um, Cardano is up tremendously. Even Doge is up. You know, up at nine, you know, nine, almost nine and a half cents. So they're going to be looking at, you know, what's that 10 percent? What's that 10 cent move? But Doge, I think, is just moving because that's the way the wind is blowing. There's nothing significant going on right now. Now, that's not to say that you can't if you have faith, if you have that hope that I was talking about, it's not to say that you can't take a couple of bucks, drop it in Doge so that if Elon actually does something, you're in a position where you could see that big pop. But then I would go back and I would say, but is anybody else doing anything with Doge? And there you go. That's that's what I'm paying attention to. XRP, 41 cents. I think that's I think that's a good place to get in. So I'm probably going to get some more. That's that's what I'm looking at. Um, I'll probably do it like tomorrow or Saturday. I, I'll, I'll get some more. Um, I tend to I tend to buy when I'm you know sitting back chilling and looking at numbers and reviewing. So that's what I'm paying attention to. If you look at the numbers, you know, on the big list, this is how you can find out, you know, from a from a numeric perspective what's going on. XRP been green for a minute, but you can see how these other coins have been up. Look at the year to date. Again, this is only the 3rd of February, so year to date is telling a big story. Look at Cardano up 62%. Something that that will shock everybody. Well, not everybody, but it'll shut this guy up. 150%. Year to date, Solana is up 150%. I don't mind admitting I'm wrong. I don't mind seeing people make money. There you go. There you go. That's a lot of cash to be making. All right, 150% on that. That's big deal. Avalanche up 100%. Strong projects. I told you what my deal is with Solana. Strong projects, though. Anyway, this is Eddie J on crypto. I hope my research helps you. I hope you take it and add it to your own research and you can make your own financial decisions. Have a good one. Bye-bye.